Hey, yes, welcome to the channel. We react a little differently around here, different films, different format. Hope you like it. Today, we are watching an episode of Life Stories from 1990. This is episode 8 of the first and only season. And it stars D.W. Moffat, Joyce Heiser, and Mitchell Lawrence. So, let's put our feet up and watch... Life Stories, Steve Burdick. Hello. In July 1980, KPRI-TV hired Steve Burdick, a recent UCLA graduate, to work as a field reporter. Two years later, he was promoted to anchor on the 6 o'clock news. The ratings <laughs> went pretty good. eight share points. Well, Gold Coast Steve Burdick was a local celebrity, but he never let that change him. He continued to volunteer for local youth groups and served on the board of his church, in addition to working a 60-hour week. All that activity kept him from having a social life, as he was the first to admit. He was still single. From time to time, someone tried to fix him up, but it never seemed to work out. <laughs> Good cover. Stay with the close-up and stand by for the two-shot. Yeah, listen, I, I've got to get going. No, I appreciate your call. Okay, get well soon. Right. Bye-bye. And that was Alan Wyatt. I used to know him at UCLA. We went out together for a while. Anyway, he's in a hospital in Denver. He's got Kaposi sarcoma. Uh oh, contact call. Steve had met Philip Richardson in 1982, before there was such a thing as safe sex. The next day, claiming a family emergency, Steve took off from work. He and Philip drove down to Los Angeles and saw an immunologist. As far as the doctor knew, they were John Campbell and William Jones. A week later, Steve and Philip got their test results. They had both tested positive. Mm, it's going to happen. There are all sorts of things they can do now. What are you talking about? We're both going to die. Philip, stop talking like that. Why can't you just deal with things for once? If you start thinking like that, you will get sick. We're going to get through this together. We will. I promise. The medical bills were adding up, but Steve never filed an insurance claim. Nothing could appear on the records. In the first nine months, it cost him $37,000, almost Ooh. his whole life savings. Steve Burdick? <laughs> T-cells are a little low, but they remain steady for quite a while now. P24s are negative, so that's a good sign. It means your HIV isn't very active. How you feeling? Fine. Good. You now your staff won't know who I am. None of them will look at your records. It's been a year and a half since Steve Burdick was first diagnosed. So far, he hasn't developed any symptoms. National Special Olympics. Quite a brave group of youngsters, aren't they? I especially like the little girl who said she wanted to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up next, sports highlights. What a weekend it was. Is it alcohol or, or is it drugs? What are you talking about? Steve, I really don't want to be having this conversation. But look back over the past few months. How many times have you showed up late? How many days have you taken off altogether? And when you do show up, you're absent-minded. You look tired and pale. Is there something wrong with your health? That's nice. she's concerned. Like what? Steve, I've been covering for you for as long as I could. I have made a hell of a lot of money for those guys. They would have the guts to fire me to my face. No one is talking about firing you. Then what? I'd like you to go on special assignment. What kind of special assignment? Some field work. Field? I was doing field work ten years ago, fresh out of college. Listen, if you want to look elsewhere, I'll understand. seem to be in any pain. 
It's me. It's Steve. I will be with you for as long as you need me. That night at 2.23 a.m., Philip Richardson died. They started lining up at 10 o'clock this morning. They washed their parents' car. I mean, what's the... Uh-oh. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? It's a Saturday morning. I never get paid. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, My new... I'm very sorry, Ed. A friend of mine died last night. <clears throat> he died of AIDS. I am HIV positive. So far, I've been lucky. Nothing's happened. I'm still healthy. But I know it's only a matter of time. And I feel very alone. The 6 o'clock news will return in a moment. Before everyone jumps down my throat, I just want to say that I take full responsibility for what happened. And it was unfortunate. But given the same situation, I'd do it again. You allowed that hysterical queen to hold a broadcast hostage and you can justify that? His lover died last night. None of us were there to help him and he had to go back to work the next day. Suppose it was your wife. The issue here is damage control. We bring him in here, we'll give him a very nice severance. You're going to fire him? He has to resign. We fire him, the publicity will kill us. <laughs> yeah. This is great. You don't want to do the cold-blooded thing as long as no one finds out about it. Barbara, his credibility is ruined. What is it, Nancy? Well, no one's been able to find him. He must have left right after the broadcast. Uh, that's all right, Nancy. Mr. McAuliffe, what would you like me to do about all the phone calls? How bad is it? It's been crazy. Non-stop. All of these people want to talk to him. What if I gave it to him? Oh, you can't Steve. think like that. Mm -mm. You can't think like that. Yeah. I mean, for all you know, it might have happened before you ever what met him. What if it didn't? He didn't know. None of us did. I didn't want you to be alone. Come on in. I'm just in the middle of getting something to eat. So. It's okay, I don't mind. For Steve, this was the first time his two worlds had collided. He didn't know what to expect. Matthew, this is Barbara Hudson. She's the news director at the station. Barbara, this is Matthew Lehman. He was Philip's best friend. Hi. Nice to meet you. Steve, they're not going to fire you. You wouldn't believe what's been going on. The phones have been ringing off the hook. People are afraid they're going to catch it if they watch me. Yeah, they're not too At this point, I'm not shacked up with Lisa Harkin. <laughs> yeah, a few were. But mostly they were moved. Look, I want you to take two weeks off. And then when you get back, we'll sit down and talk. You think I can go back on the air? That's what I was hoping. If I go back there, it's for something that matters. Well, that's fine. We'll sit down and talk about it. Something good has got to come out of this. I want to do a regular feature on the 6 o'clock news. I want to tell people what it's like to live with AIDS. Some very good writing here. So, what do you think? Do we get on the air? Barbara Weister up the waters. Things will calm down. But they aren't calming down. People are dying. People are sick right in our own community. I'm not talking about New York or San Francisco. God, I wish this whole thing would go away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'll just go on the air one time. I'll answer people's questions and I'll stop the rumors. We have their curiosity. I mean, with the slightest bit of promotion, we could turn this to our advantage. All right. But as Mark Twain once said, the reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. 
It seems a lot of you think I have AIDS. Well, I don't. I am HIV positive. So what's the difference? I've been exposed to the HIV virus. It's in my body. The HIV attacks my immune system, so my body is less capable of resisting infections. Cytomegalovirus, which often causes blindness. Uh, cryptosporidium, I can't even say that one. An infection of the <laughs> intestines, which causes severe diarrhea, and you do not want to run the marathon with that one. No, no. The <laughs> point is, until I develop any of these infections, I am just HIV positive. But whether I'm HIV positive or develop AIDS, none of you should be afraid of being around me. It isn't spread by casual contact. Newspapers and television commentators applauded his courage, and an editorial in The Mariner praised Chuck McAuliffe's enlightened attitude. Several days later, Chuck McAuliffe announced that Steve Burdick's segments would be a regular feature at the <laughs> 6 o'clock news. Good for him. There was an article about you in our paper this morning. I'm sorry, Dad. It's a terrible way for you to find out. I'm going to ask you something, and I want you to be honest with me. When you were growing up, was I too passive? Was your mother too domineering? <laughs> no, Dad, you're fine. Your mother and I want you to come back to Pullman. Yeah, well, I got a lot of work to do here, so. Uh, okay. We want you to stop doing those shows. Oh hell no! Are you angry? With this? <laughs> I mean, is, is it something that we did to you? It's not about you. <laughs> then why are you doing this to us? This has been the worst day of my life. Why would I go home when you are so ashamed of me? That's not important. In spite of everything, you're our son and we love you. Dad, no, you don't. I don't want to be loved like that. Yeah. No, I'm not going back. And I don't want to see you again, not as long as you feel like that. Stephen, you don't know what you're saying. I know exactly what I am saying! Steve. Get out of here! This is Philip Richardson. We met in January 1982 at a dinner party. And so we started to go out. Very secretively, because outside of our circle of friends, I didn't want anyone to know. Philip always hated that. He wanted us to do things together. It took four months before either of us had the nerve to say, I love you, <laughs> Philip said at first, of course. The day after he died, Philip's body was shipped back to his family in Virginia. I was told in no uncertain terms that I was not welcome at the funeral. What I think I miss most is that I would have liked to deliver a eulogy. I could have finally put into words what Philip meant to me. I guess now I have. When you're HIV positive, you live in a kind of limbo, not knowing what's waiting for you or when it's going to happen. You might go for months being okay. But then one morning, you wake up, and your pajamas are soaked in sweat. You try to tell yourself, I shouldn't put the thermostat up so high at night. But in the back of your mind, you know. Night sweats. A sure sign that trouble is on its way. And maybe this one can also be treated. <laughs> but it's no longer a single aberration. And then suddenly you have two or three <laughs> symptoms at once. And life becomes a matter of trying to keep the upper hand. And you're thinking, I don't want this to turn into a lifestyle. I still want to have my life. <laughs> For those of you watching who have HIV, I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be like that. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for being here. I know how much courage that takes. Laverne, would you tell us first when you were diagnosed with having AIDS? A little over a year ago. And what prompted you to get tested? My baby James kept on getting sick and the doctors couldn't figure it out. So finally they tested him and that's when I found out I'd given it to him mm -hmm. when I was pregnant. But since that time you've put yourself into a drug treatment program, correct? And it was a long waiting list. I had to keep on going back every day till they found a spot for me. It took five weeks. But with God's help, I made it. And James? 
James died four months ago. Mm. <laughs> the following segment contains material which some viewers may find offensive. Viewer discretion is advised. I hate it when it says that. This <laughs> show shouldn't require viewer discretion. With over 90,000 people dead in this country alone, they should be mandatory viewing. What has happened in this country over the last 10 years since this plague began has been nothing less than extermination. Turn him off! We have not wanted to face the truth about who we really are. Please stand by. Mm -hmm. The news will return in a moment. You just couldn't stick to the script. Guess nope. not. Steve, I'm gonna have to fire you. Who said are you on anyway? If you could have just cooperated a little bit longer. Oh, now it's my fault? Yes, it is. You are not the only one who's had to deal with this, you know. Oh, save him for the funeral, okay? <laughs> That night, Barbara went to Steve's apartment. She was worried about what she had seen. Trouble your balance. Two or three weeks. Any other symptoms? Sometimes I can't remember the right words for things. But, uh, oh, my muscles are so sore. You may have had a seizure. It isn't fair. I've done the shows. I've tried to do all these good things for people. It shouldn't be happening. Fair's got nothing to do with it. Steve, the virus doesn't care. And what was the point? You're Steve Burdick, aren't you? My name is Kevin. <coughs> Kevin Donovan. <coughs> Are you okay? I got the pneumonia again. It's my third time. Aren't you taking pentamidine? I guess it's not working anymore. Well, that's encouraging. I knew your lover. We were in the gay bowling league together. I always thought he was really nice. That was my favorite show that you did. When you gave the eulogy for him. That was Philip, all right. <laughs> yeah, that was Philip, all right. So how you doing? Not a good question to ask. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me in here. Well, I couldn't very well leave you on the floor. You might have caught a draft. You're not doing the shows anymore? No, Kevin, I was canned. Things got out of hand on everybody's part. So now no one's saying anything. That's right. That's the way they like it. Look up. I just came by to see how you were doing. Do you think that my mother liked it when she found out I have AIDS? She refused to even talk to me. And then she saw one of your shows. And it changed everything. I used to think you were so brave. <laughs> see how far bravery got me. You fought for us. I mean, now someone's giving you a hard time, so you're just giving up. Do you really want me to come back? But I don't want us to pick up where we left off. I never said it was going to be easy. No, you didn't. I have so much more to say. 
truth is I spent the last few weeks in University Hospital in the AIDS unit. There were many long days and nights when I felt very sick, very weak, and very scared. So if sometimes I don't have the energy or look as good as I might, I hope you'll understand. But I am so glad to be back, and I want to thank you for your support. Two months ago, he developed neuropathy, a nerve inflammation in the limbs. Since then, he's had to walk with the help of a cane. As of now, Steve Burdick is still broadcasting his segments on the 6 o'clock news. Well, that was the Steve Burdick episode of Life Stories. It is kind of sad that we have not moved much as a society beyond that point in time. This was 1990, and it is now 2024, 34 years later, and in a lot of areas, it is stuck there still. Sad and depressing. As for the show itself, very touching, moving. Um, I think the performers did a great job. Um, would have been nice, you know, if they had followed up maybe a season or two later and seeing where he was. But unfortunately the show was very short lived. It didn't last, but like one season, it was not even a full season. I don't think so. I think the IMDb said it was only like 12 episodes or something like that. Oh, well, um, if all the other episodes were as good as this one, I mean, it's kind of weird that it didn't last longer. Anyway, um, I hope you all enjoyed it. And until the next time we put our feet up, Laters.